Hey y'all, this is going to pick up from the monoprint demo. Um, last time we worked on making a few sets of different types of monoprints and I've been getting those printed the past couple days. Now what we're going to start to do is pick out a set of two that you would like to utilize for the covers of your sketchbook. So um, what I would recommend is kind of take a moment, look through your prints that you did, see if you can find two that... um have some sort of unity between them so thinking of kind of similar colors lines textures shapes patterns um and really just looking for some of those similarities that are going to kind of bridge those two sides together and are going to show kind of the two sides of that book and um, once you have those picked out what you'll want to do then is get those labeled so what i'd recommend is getting those flipped over um and just kind of notate which sides are going to be the top um, or which are going to be the bottom. Um, this just helps in the long run just to have kind of that visual notation. We'll have a few different times that you're going to do that. Just since as we go through the whole kind of making the covers for your sketchbook to getting it bound, um, there's a lot of times that those can kind of get flip-flopped around. So we're just going to make sure that we have plenty of that notation as we go through. Otherwise, um, that's going to move us over into the making of our sketchbook covers. Um, so you're going to grab four different types of paper from the paper cutter. You're going to have two sheets of parchment paper. We'll use those for drying. You're also going to grab two sheets of end slips. They're kind of smaller. I think they're about um, like eight by ten inches if I remember correctly. And then two pieces of book board. And then you'll also grab your two prints that you're going to utilize for your covers. The other thing that you're going to grab is you're going to grab out 20 sheets of the sketchbook paper. Um, grab a stack, count off the 20 sheets that you need, and then you can return those excess papers. Um, it doesn't have to be completely exact if you end up with kind of one or two extras, that's fine. But aim for about 20, return those extras, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get those folded in half for our sketchbook. And for that process, sometimes what I have students that have done in the past is they've tried to fold these together all at once. Um, try to avoid that if you can. It creates a few issues with binding later on. So what I'd recommend doing is grab stacks of about three to five papers and then fold those kind of in smaller booklets. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier in the long run and gets better results. And then as you get those folded, just make sure that those edges are all lined up, your corners match and meet. Get those crimped down and then you can use that to kind of establish your point then crimp out that middle and then get that crease of your booklet and then it's really just going to be kind of repeating that same thing until you get through all your paper um i'm going to fast forward this a little bit oh and then one other thing too the um you can either do this with your hands if you'd like to get kind of a more exact fold you can also switch over to a bone folder too Otherwise, once you have all your papers folded, what we're then going to do is we're going to take those, um, most people will probably end up with about four to six booklets of papers. Um, they're also called signatures. What you're going to do is you're going to get these nested together. You also can do this while you're folding, but just to give you the visual, you want to get those opened up to the middle and then kind of get those all collected and nested together so that you have one booklet all together. And then what we're going to do for right now is we're going to set that to the side and we're going to start to move over to the covers. Um, so you're going to grab out those papers from earlier. Um, right now you're going to put aside the parchment papers and the end slips and you're going to grab out your book board and then the two prints you decided on for your covers. Um, if you haven't yet labeled kind of what side is the tops for each of those on the back, I'd recommend doing that at this point in time just because it helps while well, you get that glued out and you think about kind of the overall which side's going to be your front and back, which side's going to be kind of the side to side and top to bottom and how do those look together. Otherwise what you're going to do is you're going to get out some glue. These are usually filled about halfway to three quarters full to kind of prevent some spillage and dripping. But what you'll do is you're going to take a paintbrush and you're going to brush a thin even layer of glue over one side of your book board. Um, it's a little bit hard to see within this, but I'm just doing a nice kind of even coat. You don't want any like really big splotches of glue. 
And then one other thing to notate is kind of any time that you're adding moisture and adding glue, you want to glue on your book board versus the cardstock or paper. Um, the book board, since it's a heavier press and there's more paper, um, paper particles, it just prevents a little bit more of that warpage that can happen with paper. So always glue on your book board when you can. Otherwise, once you have that fully covered, you're going to get it flipped over. Make sure that it's nice and centered on your the back of your print. Get that pressed down. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to start to trim off the excess paper at the corners. Um, we just want to take away some of that kind of excess or bulk material so that as we fold up those remainder sides to the inside of the cover, just neatens it up a little bit um, so we don't have kind of those big bulking corners where we have that paper kind of um, either doubling or tripling up in places. Um, for getting that cut down, you can either use a box cutter or a pair of scissors, and you're going to trim off at about a 45 degree angle that corner. And you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm leaving um, a little bit of extra material on my edge before I get to the very corner of my book board. Um, think about almost like an eighth to a quarter inch. And what this does is it just creates a little bit of extra that as we get those sides folded over, it keeps a cover on those very corners instead of having them be exposed as we get that folded over. And then once I have those trimmed down, what I'm going to actually do is use the sides of my book board to create a nice even fold. So I'm almost going to um, kind of create a hinge with my book board to my work surface. Um, and where I'm just kind of stabilizing my edge, then rocking that against the surface. And what that ends up doing is creates a nice even fold um, that'll be nice and straight and even um, without a whole lot of work. Um, once I have those kind of pre-folded, then what I'm going to do is start to get those sides glued down. Um, usually I'm going to start on those thinner sides. I'm just kind of doing a nice even layer glue right along the edge of my book board. Most of the time I'll do kind of both sides at once, and then once I have those two down, I'll switch to the top and bottom. And then what I'll do is just, I'm going to start kind of initially pressing that out with my fingers and then I'll switch over to my bone folder. Um, this just really helps kind of press down that paper into the book board um, and really um, creates a nice um, continuous bond between the two, two materials um, and it can just be a nice way to get that kind of pressed down and burnished together. Um, one thing that you'll kind of keep in mind, you will get a little bit of glue that kind of seeps out either onto the bone folder or on those edges. Um, as that happens, if there's a lot of excess, feel free to kind of just wipe that off in the middle of your book board. We'll be applying glue to that area shortly. So if you end up with a little bit of excess in that area, that ends up being just fine for our purposes right now. Otherwise, I'm just kind of starting in the middle and then pressing out to my edges, making sure that's nice and even, and then I'm happy with the fold. And then I'm going to do the same thing with those other two sides, or I'm going to do kind of nice thin layer of glue along those edges. And then I'm going to press up those sides, first with my fingers, and then move over to the bone folder. Alrighty, and then once I have that cover fully glued on, I'm going to make one more quick little notation just along my book board on the inside cover, just so that if I stop at this point before I get that inch slip on, I have that notation just so I don't forget and nothing gets mixed up on kind of processing time. But otherwise, if you're continuing, then what we're going to do is we're going to get that end slip glued on. It's going to be kind of the same process. You're going to glue directly to your book board, not on the paper. And same thing, you're going to do kind of just nice, even, thin layer of glue. Um, you'll notice with kind of this end slip, I'm avoiding the very edges. 
but for the most part, just kind of a nice even layer of glue along the whole surface. And then once I feel like I've gotten everything, I'm going to go ahead and grab my end slip. And I'm going to get that placed over top. Um, same as with your cover, you want to make sure that that's nice and centered. Going to get it all in place. And then make sure that you get that done. Once you have it kind of in place and you're happy with overall placement, then you can go in and really start to press those two surfaces together. And then one thing to kind of check is as you are getting those two pressed together is just checking for, um, you know, sides and edges. Do any of those areas need a little bit more glue? Um, or if with the opposite, do you have any glue that's seeping out that needs to get kind of wiped away with either your fingers or a paper towel before you start drying your one cover? Otherwise, what you'll do at this point is if you're all happy with your cover, you're going to get it labeled. Um, so just on this top edge, once again, I'm labeling and just kind of doing that notation of that triangle with where my top is. And then I also want you to get your name and the hour written on here. Um, name can either be kind of first, last, initials, whatever you'd like to do. And then the hour or period, um, just to make it nice and easy so they're easy to find if you're coming back the next day and then looking for your cover. Um, it also make it so that if for whatever reason it goes missing, I have a better chance of finding it for you. Um, and then what you'll do is you're going to take one of those pieces of parchment, just lay it right over the top of your cover. This is just going to prevent the covers from sticking together while they are weighted and dried. And then one thing to keep in mind is just kind of double check at this point. If you have any kind of glue that's seeping out or have kind of large boogers of glue, get those wiped off before you let that dry under one of our book weights. Otherwise, it's going to be the same process with the second cover. Get a nice, even layer of glue on your book board. Getting that pressed onto your cardstock. Getting corners trimmed off. And then pre-folding those sides. And then moving over into getting those edges glued down, first with fingers and then getting those pressed down with a bone folder. And then for one thing you may know, if you have any kind of overlap with your printing ink, um, you may have some just kind of reactivity of the ink. Um, I just kind of ended up smudging some of that kind of gluey ink to the middle since that's going to get covered up with my end slip. You can also do that on a piece of paper towel or scrap paper. There's pretty much the same process, getting that end slip glued on, adding your name and initials an hour, and then getting that under a piece of parchment to dry. And then this kind of brings us into a cleanup for the making of the covers. Uh, so for glue, make sure that you get that um, First thing actually is um, any of those paper scraps from the corners of your prints, make sure that those get thrown away. Um, for brushes and bone folders, those will need to get rinsed off with warm soapy water. Um, bone folders may be a little bit more optional. If you notice there's kind of remnant glue on it or it just feels kind of sticky, just get it rinsed off and get it dried before you head out today. Same thing with your brush, just get that nice and clean, make sure there's no glue left in those bristles. Glue containers, just make sure there's not too much excess dripping over the sides. Then get that lid put on tightly and just make sure it's stored just right upright so that it doesn't leak or drip out for the next person that's using it. And then um, either bone folders or scissors, um, or box cutters, make sure that those get put away. If you took out a cutting board and brought it to your table, make sure you get that as well too. Otherwise, that brings us to kind of the second day of the process for making the sketchbook. So you're gonna take those covers after they've had some time to dry, get those pulled out. And our first step with kind of taking these covers and our pages and moving that into creating a book in and of itself is gonna be just kind of checking um, take one more time just to reflect on your two covers just figure out double check that you're happy with the orientation that you have you can always change it at this point so if you know like you decide 
I think this one would look really, really nice in a different direction, or maybe I want the one that I thought I wanted to be my front the first time to be my back. That's just fine. You can always make those changes. And then once you're happy with your placement, you're going to take a piece of duct tape. You want to have it two times the length of the height of your sketchbook. So you'll notice I kind of marked off kind of one height and then doubled it up as I get my duct tape cut off. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your tape, you're going to lay it out sticky side up on your work surface, and then you're going to align one of those sketchbooks covers so that about half inch of your edge is overlapping on that duct tape. And you'll do that same thing with that second cover, kind of half inch overlapping, and then you'll have this almost half inch gap in between the two. This is going to create a nice flexible spine for our pages to sit. And then I'm going to sandwich that tape all the way around on that inside so that that duct tape is fully enclosed and there's no sticky spots of that adhesive left. Once I have that down, I'm going to get that all pressed together. And that's going to be the spine of my book. So once I have my two covers attached with that duct tape spine, then what I'm going to start to do is get my pages bound in. So the first step for that is you're going to grab out your sketchbook pages and you're going to grab two of the bulldog clips. And what you're going to do is you're just going to get those clamped down within your sketchbook. As you do this, you want to just make sure that those sketchbook pages are about as even as possible and kind of centered as possible so that your crease is kind of right in the middle of that spine. Pages are right about in the middle, kind of from side to side and then top to bottom. And then you're going to clamp down two sides of your papers just to hold those in place while we're doing the binding so that you don't have to worry about it moving around or wiggling. And then for the binding holes, um, you're going to start an inch in on kind of the top and bottom. And then you can either kind of just go um, kind of equidistant down if you want about five to six binding holes. Or you can do... Um, some sort of design with it as well. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the hand presses. These are really easy to use. Um, you're just going to hold it at kind of a 90 degree angle from your work surface. You can hold it really gently. The drill bit is going to do most of the work for you. And then about every um, kind of like turn and a half, you can pause, check to see that the drill bit went all the way through your sketchbook. So you'll notice as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of reaching around with the drill bit still engaged with the book, just seeing if it's gone through the duct tape. Um, as you get further along, you're gonna start to notice when you feel the drill bit kind of ease off a little bit as far as um, tension on that crank. And that's usually gonna happen when the duct tape um, gets bitten through and there's not any resistance anymore on the drill bit. Others, you're just gonna drill through each of your binding holes, making sure that you're going through all those pages and the duct tape for your spine. And then just once you've gotten those all done, flip it over, double check, make sure that you've hit all those spots. And that's gonna bring us to moving into the binding itself. So you're gonna grab out thread, the color of your choice. You want a length of thread that is five times the length of your sketchbook. So usually what I do to measure this off is I get kind of one height measured off, then I double that up to create two times, double that length up to create four times, and then add one more length that's about that height of my sketchbook. Um, this ends up being just enough thread that you'll have a little bit extra. It'll be comfortable when you finish it off and give you plenty for the whole book. Otherwise, wind up your extra thread, and then what you're going to do is you're going to switch that out with some beeswax. And what we're going to do is we're going to wax the thread of your sketchbook. What this does is it just creates a little bit more durability and endurance of your thread so that it doesn't wear out as quickly. And then for waxing it, um, usually what I do is just hold it down with one thumb and then pull the thread through with my other hand. It's going to create almost like a divot or an indentation into that wax. And the thread's going to pick up more and more of that wax as you get it pulled through. Um, typically for waxing, I recommend going through about three times. That seems to be a good balance of just getting nice coverage. And then also, um, it's a little bit less 
um, messy and avoid some of the clotting that can happen with that too. Others you'll notice I'm just kind of pulling in a downward motion as I go through those three times. And then once I have my thread all waxed, I'm going to return the beeswax and I'm going to switch that out with one of the binding sewing needles. And what's going to bring us to getting the thread onto the needle? Um, there's a few different strategies you can use with this. Um, luckily, the binding needles that we use, um, the eyes on them are pretty large, so they are a little bit easier to thread. Um, otherwise, kind of just biggest tip I can give is to twist the end of your thread. And then you can almost use this pinching motion with your forefinger and thumb, or you can just very slowly guide the thread with a lot of control into the eye. And then once that's just gone through the very start of the eye, then you can pull it through the other side. Get that pulled down so it's about halfway down on your thread. Get it so that your two ends are meeting on the other side and are about equal. And then once those are all equal, what you're going to do then is you're going to take your two ends. You're going to get those looped around either one or two of your fingers. Create a hoop and then draw the end through to create a knot. Um, leaving about almost an inch or about half inch excess on the other side of your knot. And then getting that pulled nice and tight. And you'll do that same thing one more time, so we'll double knot that. Getting it looped around, pulling the ends through, and then double knotting that over the top. This just creates a nice bulky knot so that as we start our binding, that's not gonna pull through or break through our papers. And now that we have our needle all threaded, I'm just gonna make sure that the thread isn't twisted or misaligned. And then either starting on the top or bottom side of our sketchbook, I'm going to start on one of those um, kind of furthest binding holes from the end. I'm going to start on the inside. I'm going to draw my thread all the way through till I get down to my knot, getting it pulled nice and tight. I'm going to flip it over, switching to the outside, and then I'm going to go outside back to the inside through that second binding hole. Same thing, get it pulled tight, flip over to the inside, we go inside back out to the outside through that third stitch. And then one thing I want you to keep in mind is just as you are working, make sure that your thread is pulled nice and tight. Um, if you ever have any of these hoops, um, you can go back and adjust them if needed. Really make sure that the binding is nice and taut though. What can happen with those hoops though if they are left is um, one will start off kind of raised and even if all of the rest are tight, eventually that's all going to kind of wiggle away from the cover and from the papers and it ends up making the papers kind of wiggly and it makes it not always the most enjoyable to draw on. So just kind of double check as you go through flip your sketchbook around while you're working. Just kind of double check, make sure that your, your thread's nice and taut through that binding as you go through. Others, it's just going to be kind of that inside to outside stitch. Almost look like a dotted line. Alrighty. And then once you get to that last stitch or the bottom of your sketchbook, um, instead of kind of wrapping around to the inside of your sketchbook, what you're going to do is you're going to just go back to that fifth binding hole and you're almost going to be filling in that dotted line of your binding. So I'm going to go back up to that fifth stitch from the outside to the inside, get it pulled nice and tight. And then it's going to be that same process all over again, going back up that other way. So just kind of that every other stitch, inside to outside, and then outside back to inside. And then for my last stitch, you're going to notice that you're going to finish up with that stitch complete on both sides. You're going to be on the outside. We don't want to knot off our kind of final on the 
outside. The outside of the book usually gets the most wear and tear, whereas that kind of most middle point of the book is going to be fairly protected. So we're going to actually do a double stitch back over that first stitch on the outside. And then what we'll do from there is we're actually going to take our needle when it's in the inside and we're going to knot off our string. And how you're going to do that is you're going to bring your needle under one of your binding stitches. You're going to reserve a hoop of thread. It'll almost create like a backwards D shape or um, sometimes people think it kind of looks like a back or like a four. And then what you'll do is pull your needle through, get it pulled tight. And also I'm kind of pulling from the side and then up to the top. And then I'm going to do that same thing one more time to create a double knot. So reserving a hoop, taking my needle, drawing that through, and then getting it pulled nice and tight. And then once I have that pulled tight, you have two options with your thread. Either you can trim it down so it's about a, I would say to be safe, a quarter inch or more. You don't want to cut down right next to your knots because what can end up happening is the thread eventually will start to fray and then sometimes it can just kind of completely rip out the knot. So give yourself a little bit of length. Um, the other option is you can also leave about an inch excess and then you'll just kind of twist that around the interior binding. Um, creates a nice kind of finalized appearance um, and can have a nice look with just kind of um, handmade binding. And then what will happen is, since the thread is waxed, it's really just going to help hold that in place. So it's not going to wiggle around too much, and it's going to keep it fairly stable. Otherwise, that is, um, that's everything for the binding. So then we're going to start to switch this over into cleanup. So um, scissors should get returned. Bulldog clips are good to take off at this point in time. So you can get those unclipped and then returned. For the needle and thread, what you'll want to do is just make sure that if you have kind of small excess amounts of thread, those get tossed in the trash, make sure that you take your thread off your needle and then make sure that needle gets returned and then it's not getting thrown away with your thread. Um, and then the only time that I really want thread to be returned is if like you grabbed way, way too much, like double the amount of what you needed. Um, otherwise, if it's anything less than about a foot, um, just get it in the trash. Otherwise, that's all for our sketchbook. Um, one thing you might notice is the binding on these are usually a little stiff at first. So if you're noticing that it's sitting partially open, what you can do is kind of crimp the spine of your book. And it's just going to help loosen it up a little bit. Um, it'll also kind of ease up a little bit as we work with it more and more. And that'll bring us to kind of the final criteria for this project with getting kind of that text and handwritten component in. So that is everything. Um, I hope this helped and just made this process a little bit easier for you. Use what you need and then I will see you next time. Thanks everybody.